Docs in a Meta now allows you to render entire sections dynamically in your documents. What that means is that you can take chunks of text, uh, tables, whatever, turn them into a section and then define when they should render, under which conditions they should render and appear in your printed, created documents. It's a very, very powerful feature that allows for lots and lots of use cases. I want to show you two use cases today. Let's get into it. So the first example I want to show you is an automation where we automate employment offers or employment contracts. We want to automate two types of contracts, full-time positions and internships. Usually before you would have to create two different templates for it. But now I want to show you how this can be combined in one template using sections. Basically how this template looks like that is that we have shared areas, like this is always the same and the company name and all that is the same and the candidate name, all these fields are the same. Where we differentiate already is under the type. Basically it's an employment type and the employment type is either full-time or is internship. And then we have two different sections that we render depending on whether it is an internship or full-time employment. If it's full employment, then we rent these areas, including a line items table here. And so we talk about the compensation and benefits, etc. If it's an internship, then we render this section here, uh, including how long it takes, something about the stipend um, and uh, like the learning objectives. So like just different content we want to include there. As you can see, Doxomer now introduces a new template syntax here, or like a syntax for specifically for sections. And basically it's a bit like you would know it from other languages like HTML, for instance, where you have an opening tag and then a closing tag. So basically the open tag and closing tag basically wraps that section. And in this case, the section is called full employment. Sections are always declared with the section underscore, uh, and then whatever you want to call them. And this is how they open section underscore full employment. And then they're closed by adding this slash here. So we add the slash and then section underscore full employment to close, basically tell Doxamida this is where the section ends. And then we end, open the second section or the other section basically right away as well, where we say section underscore internship, um, and we close it in the same way. I've added some color here, so it's easier to see them. Otherwise, it um, can be hard to know exactly where they started. These section tags are fully removed anyways, in any case. Not only are they removed, also the line is removed. So you can apply color here to make it itself, um, and um, they're gonna be gonna disappear in, doc in create documents anyways. Let's go into our automation settings and see how we set this up. I'm using uh, API here as a data source, but this would work basically for any data source. You have a third area where we can um, set conditions for our, for our placeholders. In the case of Airtable, you would have data mapping here, or in the case of data sources where there is mapping, there's data mapping here. But in this case, in uh, the API case, we're just setting some additional settings for all variables. If we go down, we see our line items tables, and then we see a new section called sections. <clears throat> and there we see our two sections that we've declared in our template, full employment and internship. If I open these, I can set conditions under which they should appear. So full employment, we show if, and then we can uh, select all my variables here, show if employment type equals full time. Because I define, okay, if it's a full-time position, I always I always pass full-time for that variable. And we saw that variable before. If we go back into uh, if we go back into the template, we saw that this variable basically appears here under type. We have employment type, and depending on what we pass here, we basically want to render the employment full employment section, or we want to render the internship. Uh, section. So we say full employment show if the employment type is full time and internship show if the employment type is internship. If I now go into my sample data, um, I uh, have my employment type set here. And if I create the preview now for this document, we will see that only the section for internships is going to appear. So we see here the type in this case is internship. And then 
we only have one section here. They see this one section and we see that we see the duration and stipend learning objectives. So that, that block that we wanted to show when it is an internship and not a full-time employment. Let's do the other example as well, where here I would pass full-time. And if I now create the document, then we will see that we get our full-time block with compensation and the benefits and a different table they were rendering in that case, et cetera, et cetera. There are, of course, many, many different use cases for this, but I hope this sort of gives you an idea of what you can do with it. Of course, there can be way more sections. This can depend on other variables. Um, you need to apply this to your use case, but this is very, very powerful in order to make your documents more flexible and adapt to different situations. The second use case I want to show you is a bit more advanced because it uses another feature that is now introduced to Docs.Ometa called hidden values or the ability to hide values, always hide values from your created documents. Not always do we want sections to depend on data that is actually added to documents. Maybe we want to add another condition or something that we're not actually showing in documents. Let me show you how that works. So our use case, here's an invoice use case where I have certain line items and depending on which line item is added, I want to add additional details in an appendix for those items. So I might have like a web development package here or mobile app development package, hosting and maintenance package. And I'm just basically adding all these as sections in my appendix and then i say please render them if weapon development for instance is part of line items this is an Airtable example so let's go into Airtable quickly and let's see how the base looks like here just so we've seen the, the our, our source data um, i have an invoices table and then this invoice here for instance and certain line items are connected to it from the line items table and for instance, here we have a, something where it has the description web development package. Now I've added a lookup field here in Airtable where I say, look this up if the description is web development or mobile app development, etc. This is something that I really only need in order to render my sections dynamically, basically. And it's not something that I that I need printed this field this variable here, I don't, or this field or the data in here, I don't need to add to my documents. So how does that work? In our template, I have defined a variable called appendix packages, but this appendix packages variable, I don't really want to show. The only thing I do with that variable is if we go to our mapping part, uh, we see that here. Um, the only thing I want to do with this is that I want to map our appendix packages field and then i have settings here and i say always hide so this variable is never going to appear in our documents but what i can do now is under sections where our three sections appear that i've defined in the appendix in the document template i can basically say the web development package show if the appendix packages variable this one contains web development and mobile app development contain that if contain uh, show this if appendix packages contains mobile app and this is basically based on based on our lookup field here so if i add this one here that has mobile app development then you would see that let me do that again let's reload this then you would see that now basically this variable has web development package and mobile app development and now if I go in here and I say, okay, if this also contains mobile app, shorten this a bit, mobile app, then please render this section as well. So if I now go ahead and I actually create this, this document for the record, which is called invoice one, we should see that we see two appendixes or two areas, one for web development package and one for mobile app development. So we open our document, we see our three items in here. And then we have web development package and mobile app development in our appendix, but we don't have anything about hosting because hosting wasn't included in the line items list and hosting was just to go back here. Hosting was sort of the third area that we had defined, but it's now not included in our, in our created document. If I go ahead and I, um, this one from our line items where I now only have uh, like only have the web development package 
that we want to show in the appendix. If I go ahead and print this again, then we will now see that basically this section here about mobile app development um, is missing from our create document. So I hope this gives you an idea of how you can use hidden variables, hidden values, basically, in order to render stuff dynamically. If, as in the previous example, if rendering sections or showing sections depends on something that is uh, in the document anyways, that's great, then you don't need it. But if um, it's a more advanced use case where your condition is actually not created, not printed on the document itself, then you can use that feature and still have your sections render dynamically, basically, and achieve it that way as we did in this example. Yeah, and that's it. That's how sections work in Docs Automator. Can't wait to see what you're building with it. Looking forward to any feedback you may have for it. And now I wish you happy automating and speak to you very soon.